Alright guys, I'm going to AEW, a new wrestling promotion. It stands for All Elite Wrestling. And it's uh, kind of started by this core group of wrestlers called The Elite. And uh, basically four guys. And mainly Cody Rhodes and the Young, young Bucks. These two uh, tag team brothers. Uh, I think it's Nick and Matt Jackson. I uh, said, I don't even know for sure. I know one of them's Matt. I think the other one's Nick. I don't know. But then there's also Kenny Omega, who's part of their group. And Cody Rhodes is the son of a legendary uh, wrestler, Dody, Cody, or Dusty Rhodes. Sorry, Dusty Rhodes. If anybody watched wrestling or know anything about it a long time ago, Dusty Rhodes was, you know, the son of a plumber. This big dude who wore, uh, you know, a kind of like heavy set guy, not really all muscular, but a big size. And, um,. In the WWE, they had him wearing, like, polka dot clothing, and, uh, he's kind of up there with Hulk Hogan. You know, Hulk Hogan was definitely, like, the legendary, you know, the top of the top, but, um, his persona was, you know, Dusty Rhodes was kind of like the everyday man, but he was also, like, great backstage and everything. He had a lot to do with the product as a whole, but he was, he was in, you know, the major promotions, WCW and WWF, and... Anyway, I'm going to upload this on the uh, It Is Written KJV 1611 channel because I can yeah. use Spreaker and I can just kind of speak my mind on here. And uh, I have the One True Misfit channel that I do like movie reviews and video games and wrestling and all that. And might upload it on there too, but uh, I just you know, I just want to record some audio, just share some thoughts for anybody who wants to hear. And you know, some Christians might not agree with, uh, you know, Christian finding enjoyment with a uh, wrestling product, but uh, because there's violence and there's sexuality and, you know, there's lots of different things that could be pointed out, all the negatives, um, but, you know, and that's the way I was when I first got saved, and um, I think it's a little bit strict to think that way, though, and I've kind of relaxed since then, and I haven't had, this is going to be on a Saturday night, it's this coming Saturday, like a few days away, it's in Chicago, and I haven't had a Saturday night off for like two years, <laughs> and uh, that's, you know, part of that's because of my schedule with UPS, I wanted to work on the weekends at my one job so I could have the week open for UPS, and also, you know, I don't mind working the weekends, and I think it's kind of a sacrifice for me to work there is that, you know, I'm like a steady weekend guy when weekends are times when people want to call in all the time. I don't drink or party or anything. I don't care, you know, what nights I have off. You know, my Monday night can be my Saturday night, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. But there are a lot of events that go on on the weekends that I miss, you know. And and I know that if I had the weekends off, I'd probably be trying to go to a lot of them and I'd be spending a lot more money. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's experiences, which, you know, is good, but at the same time, you know, there's stuff I can find during the week or whatever, I just, anyway, there's been lots of times when my cousin and, and friends have wanted me to have off the weekend, and I'm like, no, no, I've got to work, you know, nothing's really important enough for me to, to, to call it off, because I don't want to mess up my schedule or anything, I don't, you know, anyway, um, and this will be the first time that I've requested a day off, really, to, uh, in two years, and, um, but this is definitely worth it for me because I see this as like a historic event. It's something totally different. And uh, I've been a wrestling fan for a long time. You know, I've had my brief periods away from it. You know, like I said, when I, was, when I got saved, you know, I was away from it for years. And, you know, there's been times before when I was away from it. Uh, but throughout my childhood and teens and everything, it was a pretty big role, you know. I grew up, you know, the the late 80s, early 90s wrestling. Hulk Hogan was big, you know, one of my favorites. And The Undertaker, like, when he first started. And, you know, we didn't have cable until, like, I was a teenager. So I went to a lot of friends, and they would have, like, videotapes that they recorded of the events that we would watch. You know, we had the figurines. Um, Hulk Hogan was in movies at that time. So it was pretty popular to a degree. And, um... You know, he was on TV and everything, and there was video games of the wrestling, and, you know, I don't know, um, 
but it was mostly watched on VHS tapes that friends had, and maybe I could rent from, you know, family video or whatever. So, uh, but once I became a teenager, then, um, we did get cable, and that was during, like, the Monday Night Wars when there was the two huge promotions, WCW and WWF, and they were going head-to-head on Monday nights. One, you know, WWF had Raw on the USA Network, and WCW had Monday Nitro on the, uh, on TNT. And Monday Nitro was three hours long, and it, and it was live, where Raw was a lot of times, like, pre-recorded, and, um, it was only two hours, and Nitro also had the replay to where it would play Nitro back-to-back, so... Uh, I was always a WWF fan, but I did love WCW, I loved the NWO, and, like, Hulk Hogan went to WCW, he became a bad guy, he totally, like, reinvented himself, and, um, you know, but I really love Stone Cold and The Rock, and it was actually kind of a bonding thing with my dad, you know, my dad likes to drink, and <laughs> there was Stone Cold, the wrestler, who was always drinking beers, and he was kicking the boss's butt, Vince McMahon, and... Raw was always so exciting, it was edgy, and, like, you never knew what was going to happen on Raw, and it always made you want to tune in again, like, the way it would end on cliffhangers and stuff, it's like, oh, I can't wait until, you know, next week, and, uh, I didn't really get to watch the pay-per-views a lot, unless, like, a friend's parent rented them, or, again, like, if I rented it on, on VHS, or VHS or something, didn't really watch them live, later on, though, after I went to rehab and everything, like, after 18, 19, I, you know, started working, and I was able to, you know, get satellite, and I would start ordering pay-per-views. And I'm not sure what my first pay-per-view was that I ordered, I have to think. I don't know if it was, like, WrestleMania 22 or what, but, you know, ECW One Night Stand was one of my favorite pay-per-views. ECW was another promotion that was pretty popular. It got to be on TNN. And it was an extreme wrestling organization where they used a lot of weapons and stuff. And it was a smaller one, but WWF and WCW started pillaging, like, their talent. And they, like, took talent from ECW, basically. And because of these Monday Night Wars, these two major promotions, there was talent jumping back and forth between WWF and WCW. You know, to get more money on one side or whatever, they would they would go back and forth to get whatever they wanted. And uh, so it's just very exciting And I would switch back and forth between both of them, you know, or I'd watch the replay of Nitro afterwards. And, you know, my cousin liked WCW, and and it had Sting and everything, all those people. The WWF had The Undertaker and Stone Cold and The Rock, who's a mega movie star now. Everybody knows who The Rock is. But, uh, it was just, again, there was video games, and it was just so pop culture. And, like, everybody in school, like, Wrestling was at its peak back then. I mean, they were drawing ratings of, like, 7 million people or something, you know, uh, on Monday nights, to where now they only get, like, half of that, or even less a lot of times. But it was just, like, mega popular. Like, everybody was talking about it and stuff. And, you know, maybe not even a fan to the extent that I was, but people knew about it. So it was very exciting in the late 90s. That was, you know, that was just amazing. And so since then, you know, WCW as a promotion went under, and WWF, you know, Vince McMahon bought them. The WWF became WWE, and they pretty much had Monopoly for a long time. They've built themselves up really strongly. They've become like PG. They do a lot of good um, public relations stuff. They do stuff for Make-A-Wish and all kinds of good charities and they do tribute to the troops and stuff like that, and um, they've built their own network, like their own streaming network, where they have their own shows, and, and they've just expanded, and they've got more talent, and more shows, and bigger and bigger and bigger corporation, and there's been some littler companies that have came along since, uh, TNA was one of the biggest ones, and they were on Spike TV, and uh, they had Sting and some of the old wrestlers, you know, and they had some of the, the new stars that WWE has today that are, like, the top stars and, like, kind of begun in TNA, like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe and everything. 
But I'm just kind of going through the the history of wrestling or my fandom of wrestling or whatever to get to this point that, you know, it wasn't until after I was 18 that I was actually able to go to my first Raw and SmackDown Super Show in St. Louis with a friend where they had, like, they had a live Raw and then they had SmackDown immediately after it that was recorded that was going to, you know, play on Thursday or Friday or whenever SmackDown was then. That's, like, their second show. And, um, man, that was such an experience for me to finally be able to go to a wrestling event live. It felt so great. It felt like a dream come true. Oh, it was so amazing. And I got to see The Undertaker vs. John Cena in a dark match. And that was like, it's like a once in a lifetime. It was an amazing experience. I got to see Shawn Michaels and just all kinds of stars. But, um, since then, I've been to a lot of different shows. I found local indie promotions, and I actually did a little bit of training for myself, you know, for like, I don't know, maybe a couple months or something, and uh, there was just so much going on in my life at the time that I couldn't balance it all, but I loved it when I was doing it, and, you know, I um, overcame things that I faced in the ring, uh, fears of, like, doing front flips and stuff, because at first I'd freeze up when I was going to do it, but, you know, I learned some basic moves and some, some simple, you know, I got to feel the ropes and feel the mat and everything, and it really is tough, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I scraped up my elbows a lot because I would try to, I'd try to protect myself when I fell with, like, my hands or my elbows or something, and, you know, they scrape really easily, and, ugh. But it was awesome, and you know, you got to do so many exercises. So much of it is just being in shape, first of all. It's just, you know, do squats and squats and squats and push-ups and jump rope and this and that. So much cardio that's involved before you even start learning moves and get into the fun stuff. And, you know, I really love that. I love, like, the, you know, wanting to better myself physically and... But anyway, I saw tons and tons of indie promotion shows. And, you know, I've seen some big stars at those. And with my cousin, we went to a few shows. We went to an ROH show, Ring of Honor, which is another big promotion, but it's not really televised on, like, a cable TV. Uh, It's on, like, a local channel. But um, it's another promotion where the WWE has, like, pillaged a lot of wrestlers from, where a lot of wrestlers had their beginnings in Ring of Honor. I've been to the TNA house show, and I've been to, me and my cousin went to this, like, big indie promotion in Chicago called AAW, I think it's, like, uh, something like All American Wrestling or something, but I don't think that's quite it, but, uh, I can't remember what it is. But anyway, it's, uh, we saw a lot of big stars there, and we were really close, too. A lot of times I was kind of at a distance, not like really high up, but, you know, in the stands a little bit. Um, I've been to WWE house shows, and I, and I did get lucky to be pretty close in one of those two. With my cousin and uncle, and uh, I took my mom to a house show one time. She really loved it. And... Um, a house show is basically like a live event, like it's not a Raw or SmackDown, it's it's nothing to do with their TV shows, it's just a show just for the audience that's there. Okay, they have their stars come in and everything and have their matches, and you know, it's just a special show for that town, um, you know, just to experience the wrestling, and it's not recorded or anything like that. And so, you know, they've got their TV shows, they got their live shows where they tour, and they tour all over for their TV shows and everything. Then they got their pay-per-views, and these are like the mega events. This is like where the big matches go down. And um, so anyway, there's this new company, All Elite Wrestling, and uh, they're backed by this billionaire, and they've got a, a pretty big roster, some superstars. They've got Chris Jericho, which is like their biggest name. He was in WCW, he was in WWF. He's, you know, been, had all kinds of championships. He's uh, in a band called Fozzy, so he's pretty, pretty popular. Um, but they've got Cody Rhodes, and uh, his brother is Gold Dust, that was in the WWF, and, and he's in AEW as well. 
They're both the sons of the legendary Dusty Rhodes. And so this new promotion, All Elite Wrestling, it's going to be on TNT in the fall. And they're going to be going to head-to-head with WWE on Wednesday nights. Because WWE has another show called NXT, which is kind of their uh, training grounds in a sense. But a lot of people think that it's kind of their best product because Raw and SmackDown's become so dull over the years. Just a lot of bad decisions to where it just, you know, I don't know. It seems like they're just always making wrong decisions that that just kills the product, kills your interest. And um, if you've been a longtime fan, it's like, you know, it's not exciting like it used to be. Like I talked about when I was a teenager, how Raw was so exciting and you always wanted to tune in. And now it's like you just want to sleep when you're watching it and you just regret watching it because it's just so dull. Um, they just bore you to death. And like nothing ever good really happens. But NXT was a show that was on the network that they have, the streaming network. And because AEW is going, was going to be on TNT at the same time, they decided to move... Uh, NXT to to USA and they're going to make it two hours where it was one hour it's going to be two hours just like AEW is going to be two hours and they're going to go head to head and Vince McMahon's going to try to squash AEW uh, like that we'll see what happens it's going to be very interesting so it's going to be like I was was when I was a teen with the Monday Night Wars now it's going to be the Wednesday Night Wars and um you know, WWE is also going to have SmackDown move to Fox in the fall. And that's interesting, too. But um, Vince McMahon is having... NXT is starting in September when AEW isn't going to start until the fall. So Vince is also trying to jumpstart, you know, um, people tuning in to NXT. It's going to be very exciting... And um, NXT is one show that I've never been to live, and they're going to be in Chicago. Uh, but I'm going to miss that. But, you know, at this point, I'm, like, all on board with AEW, pretty much, because it's this new promotion. They're a lot different. Um, it reminds me of, like, WCW. It reminds me of the days of old. They have, like, blood in their pay-per-views. They're not afraid to have blood and stuff. Like, the WWE's really cut back on that. And um, the fans are really passionate in AEW. I mean, the chants and the audience is just loud. And it really gets you pumped into the match. AEW has Jim Ross, who is the who is the longtime commentator for the WWF, like the voice of the WWF, uh, during the era of Stone Cold and The Rock. And he was the one who was really putting everything over. And they've also just hired Tony Schiavone, who was like the voice of WCW. So these are some pretty big deals. And I've loved everything that I've seen from AEW. Like, even the stuff that's just okay is, like, better than what the WWE's been doing. So I'm just really so excited about this new promotion. And, you know, they have Pyro. The WWE cut back on the Pyro, the fireworks and stuff. They don't do that anymore. And so this is truly, like, the wrestling of old, you know, with all the pomp and circumstance, all the, um, you know all the fun stuff that goes along with it just being there and um so they're having their second main pay-per-view which is going to be called all out at AEW. because when this whole thing started before this became a company like a year ago they had a show in chicago in the same arena and it was called all in and there was this bet that there would be no indie promotion um, that could get a crowd like this big, like 12, you know, 12,000 or 15,000 people in an arena because it hasn't been done since the days of WCW, like over a decade, you know, really like two decades, basically. It hasn't happened for like almost 20 years. And, and so, um, so Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks set out to, to prove them wrong and they did. And they sold out this event, and it was called All In, where, you know, they went all in to do this show. And um, this was before it was AEW. This was just these indie guys getting together, these different promotions getting together to put on this mega show. 
And they did it. And so they got interest from Tony Khan, this, this billionaire guy whose dad owns a football team or something. I don't know. But there's a lot of money involved in this. They became a company, and they had their show called Double or Nothing, like a few months ago. I don't remember when that was. Um, so they had, you know, Double or Nothing was their first show, and that was great. And John Moxley debuted at the end of it, who was Dean Ambrose in the WWE. So he was like a major player in the WWE, like just months ago. For like years, he was one of their top guys. And then he uh, left there, and he went to AEW. So that was one of their huge surprises, and um, they've had a couple of smaller shows, but this is basically their second main sh- pay-per-view, and it's called All Out. So, you know, when it all started, it was all in, and now they're going all out. And so this is supposed to be their biggest pay-per-view of the year, and this is in Chicago, and I'm going this Saturday. Paid $100 for a ticket, me and my cousin... And um, tickets were hard to get. Uh, had to get them online. They sold out in five minutes. And um, I was prepared early to, to get in to sell them to, or to buy them. And um, I hesitated just like a minute or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, like they're on sale. I need to buy them now. And it was just, I couldn't really pick what I wanted because I didn't plan on spending $100. I was going to do like 50 or 60 at the most. But... Um, you know, it had to be what I could get. And I, and I was wanting to get tickets for two other people. So, you know, I was buying the ticket for my cousin. I knew I had, like, a $200 limit max, and there's, like, no way I could go over that. And so it ended up being just, I'm just, you know, I just had to get one for me and my cousin, $100 each. And I was very glad and, and happy and blessed to get those. And uh, we were going to be up kind of high, um, like, in the first kind of balcony area um but i think it's a pretty small arena um so we're going to be able to see everything fine and it should be fine and we're going to enjoy it anyways just to be a part of the experience it's going to be incredible and it's about a four hour drive for us to get there it's going to be an adventure (laughs) for sure it's gonna the doors open at 5 p.m and uh the show starts at 6. There's going to be the buy-in show, so if anybody's interested, I think on YouTube, the buy-in is going to be free to watch the first hour, like at 6 o'clock Central Time, AEW is going to have the buy-in, and they're going to have a couple matches, and this is going to be to get people interested to rent the pay-per-view, okay? It's like their pre-show, and they're going to have a couple matches, they're going to have a tag team match, and they're going to have a women's battle royal. Now, the big thing about this event all out is that they are going to be having a match in the main event for the inaugural AEW World Champion. Um, So the winner of that match is going to become the the first champion, so it's a historic event. That match is going to be Chris Jericho versus Hangman Page. Obviously, Chris Jericho is the legendary wrestler, and Hangman Page is this new up and rising star who, uh, you know, is friends with the Young Bucks and Cody and all that. And, um, so that's going to be interesting. Their world title looks beautiful. Uh, the WWE has changed their belts to, to really look pretty crappy. Their world titles, basically just their WWE logo on the belt. Um, but the AEW title is this big gold belt with, like, different plates on it. And it just, it looks like a, a real championship. And Bret Hart debuted the title at Double or Nothing, which was pretty cool. He's a legendary wrestler. A lot of people know Bret the Hitman Hart. He was there to reveal the title. And um, so at the um, at Double or Nothing, they had a men's battle royal. And they had a match with Jericho and Kenny Omega and those two. And whoever won between Kenny Omega and Jericho and whoever won the Men's Battle Royal was going to go on to face for the title. And so that's how Jericho won against Kenny Omega. Hangman won in the Battle Royal, so they're facing each other. Now that's what they're doing with the Women's uh, Battle Royal at this one. They're having a Women's Battle Royal, and then they're having a Women's Single Match. And whoever wins those face each other on their first night on TNT. 
and they're going to have the women's champion crowned on their debut show on TNT. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's going to be a lot of debuts in this women's battle royal, um, and, and they've announced a lot, but there's probably still some secrets. Oh, I feel like I've been talking for 20 minutes, and I don't know how much I want to go down the card right now, but I really want to go over every match with you, and I'm hoping that before the show and after the show, my cousin will go over it with me as well, and we'll record it so you can hear you know, my cousin's opinion and we talk, us talking about it. But, um... So... Wow. I think there's like 10 matches altogether... Like the two, there's going to be two matches on the buy-in, and then there's going to be eight matches on the main pay-per-view. So it's pretty stacked, and I think that's what they've normally been doing, um, even for their littler shows, and then, you know, for their big uh, double or nothing. Uh, now, a really bad thing about this is when John Moxley debuted at Double or Nothing. Um, the main event was Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega, which Chris Jericho won, and I said, you know, he was going to f- go on for the world title. Well, John Moxley debuted, and he, he fought both of them, and he really attacked Kenny Omega, and they fought through the audience and everything, and so they were building up this huge grudge, and this was supposed to be the blow-off match at All Out, and it's one of the matches that I was looking forward to the most, was John Moxley and Kenny Omega, because... John Moxley, like I said, he's been the top star of the WWE for a long time. He's been up there, and he's a hardcore um, wrestler, and he's been totally reinventing himself ever since he left because he showed up in AEW, but he was also went to wrestle in Japan, and he's had some, some of the best matches of his career after he's left the WWE, which is insane. Um, but he's really kind of reinvented himself, and he has a more vicious side to him. and It's just his matches have been great. And Kenny Omega is a star who is born from Canada, but he wrestled in New Japan for years and years and years. And he's put on these matches, especially with Okada, that, um, you know, Dave Meltzer is a guy who rates matches. He's been rating matches for a long time. He rated, you know, at least one of the matches with Kenny and Okada as a seven-star match. Seven stars out of five. (laughs) Okay. So he's given them five star matches, and at one time he said, "Well, that's a six star match because it was so good, like it's above his rating system." And then he even went on to call one a seven star match. I think that might have been their time limit draw. They had like a, a sixty minute time limit draw, where they wrestled for like sixty minutes. I think maybe it was shorter. I don't know, but it was just it's just so back and forth, and they keep going, and the endurance is like, man, you just get into it. It's like. Wow, the stuff just blows your mind. Like, they're getting dropped on their head left and right, kicked in the head. <laughs> it's like, how do they keep going? And, um, it's just, wow. It makes you stand on your feet. Well, anyway, I was looking forward to this match of these two guys. Kenny Omega, this, you know, guy who just has this insane endurance, puts on these wonderful matches going against this hardcore guy who's really like one of the biggest stars they got you know as far as popularity and um he has this hardcore style they've kind of got different styles how are they going to mesh and everything and they had this feud going on but john moxley got uh, his elbow injured or something and he ended up getting like MRSA, so he had to call it off which really sucks it was like a big blow to this pay-per-view Okay, there's a lot of really good matches on the card that are still there. But for a lot of people, that was really one of the big ones they were building up to, besides like the world title you know, main event. And this might have even been considered a bigger match than that. But they replaced him with this other guy who was in the WWE too, who was supposed to be a double or nothing to face Hangman Page, but because this guy had uh, commitments to another promotion... You know, he kind of did like a handshake deal with AEW. He's like, but he's still with this other company, and there was some conflict there, and so he couldn't be there, or he couldn't do the match the way they wanted him to, or whatever. So now he's going to debut, and he's going to wrestle Kenny Omega. And this guy is also like a super match machine guy who puts on phenomenal matches. 
So everybody's like, well, this will probably be a better match. Even though John Moxley and Kenny Omega is really interesting and everybody wanted to see it, this will probably, this has the potential to be another seven star match. So I could witness a match that, you know, could be the match of the year. As far as wrestling fans are concerned, this could be the match of the year. Um, so they they took a really bad situation and you know they they probably turned it around in a great way, uh, you know as best as they could. There's just so much about this show and everybody's anticipating that CM Punk could show up. He's another uh, great personality that was in WWE. He's straight edge. He doesn't do drugs um, or drink or anything, but he. Uh, he had a really great wrestling career, but he wanted to go on and do UFC. <laughs> he wanted to give mixed martial arts a try, and he just got squashed in the UFC, and it was terrible. Uh, but wrestling fans still love him. Wrestling fans want him back because not only was he really great in the ring and very athletic, but he was really great on the mic. And just he, the way he talks, um, you know, he just captivate, he captivates the audiences. He has that big star feel, and I think wrestling fans will forgive him, even though, you know, he was humiliated in the UFC. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of people give him props for just trying, too, because he didn't have to do it, but he tried. Um, so there's that, and, uh, you know, CM Punk said that he's not going to be there, but he's going to be in town at StarCast signing autographs, and so... You know, even though he says he's not going to show up, there's still, you know, a lot of uh, speculation that, you know, maybe he's just trying to keep it secret. Who knows? We don't know, but I'm sure that the whole audience is going to be chanting for him, at least at the end of the night, if not, you know, all throughout the pay-per-view. And I'll be chanting for him as well, because I want that moment to happen. You know, I want to be there when it happens, and it would be so great. But even if not, the pay-per-view is going to be amazing. It's going to be the greatest pay-per-view or the greatest wrestling show that I've ever been to. Now, the biggest wrestling show that I think that I've been to besides that is when I went to Indiana and I went to a SummerSlam. I don't remember what year it was, but the main event was The Undertaker and Edge in the Hell in a Cell. And like I said, The Undertaker's been like always my favorite wrestler, basically. And being able to see him in a Hell in a Cell match and with Edge, it was pretty phenomenal. And it was great. And I've seen John Cena and Batista. And I've seen CM Punk and JBL. And I remember really liking that match. It was really good. Um, so there was a lot of good matches that night. Um, uh, unfortunately, I think Triple H versus The Great Khali was one, which wasn't the best. But, uh, you know, The Undertaker and Edge and the Hell in the Cell was great. And, like... I don't remember if it was The Undertaker or Edge, but one of them, like, knocked the other one through the cell. I don't know if it was, like, Edge speared The Undertaker through the cell or what, but, like, because the hell in the cell is this, this structure that's like a cell. It's like a cage on the outside of the ring, like on the outside of the mats that has a roof on it, a cage roof. And um, so they're supposed to, the idea is that you're stuck inside of hell in a cell, and uh, weapons can be used inside, and it's just supposed to be like a barbaric match where, you know, it's like violence contained inside of a cell. But, and, and it's always been like Undertaker's big match. Now they do it more for everybody, and they even have a pay-per-view named Hell in a Cell where they do it like once a year, and they have like two of those matches, but... Um, but they busted out of the cell and things got crazy, and it was just, wow, it was great. But, uh, you know, I was there with my ex-fiance and a couple of friends, or, well, a friend and his girlfriend is what it was, so. Um, but being able to go with my cousin to this all out, just me and my cousin, and we were, like, both huge wrestling fans, and we've always been wrestling fans, and we lived through that, that 90s period with the Monday Night Wars, and we're both excited about this new promotion, and it's just going to be like, ugh, it's going to be great. You know, I could say it'd be like Christmas, that's kind of cliche, but it's, I'm going to have really fun. I'm going to enjoy myself, we're both going to enjoy it. It should be a wonderful night, hopefully, God willing, that everything goes well. 
with the trip and everything else. Um, you know, it's going to be an unforgettable night. And I'm looking forward to it. And I'll make other videos probably running down each of the matches. So I know this is, or, you know, audio recordings, whatever. This is kind of all over the place, but I'm just so excited. I just got to let it out. I just got to let it out. It's, ugh. It is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be a way to relax. We're going to be chanting and yelling and, you know, just letting it all out. We're going to leave exhausted and tired and sore throat probably and, you know, but really relieved and, um, and happy and, uh, you know, and then I'm going to get to watch it, you know, as it was on TV with the commentators and everything, and that's going to be another experience, and it's going to be like, yeah, I was there, it's cool, and get to see it from a different perspective, and get to see, like, how everybody enjoyed the show, or didn't enjoy it, you know, couldn't have turned out to be a horrible show, but I really doubt it, I really, I can't see how they could go wrong with this show. Oh, anyway, I found out the parking for it's going to be $20, and, uh, yeah, I've already got a full tank of gas. You know, we'll probably have to put more in gas. Um, but, you know, the journey just up to Chicago is going to be interesting. We've done it multiple times. I've done it by myself. We've done it together. We're probably going to take turns driving. But uh, we're driving there and back. So it's going to be a long day and night. But it's going to be it's going to be great. So thanks, guys, for listening. Let me know what you think. And... I'll probably be sharing more of this, you know, before and after, because it's a big deal to me. It's just, it's just something that's going to be exciting, just a way to relieve stress, just to, you know, just to forget about everything else for a night, and just enjoy myself in a good, legal, you know, uh, somewhat wholesome way. Yeah, there's probably going to be, there's going to be violence, there's going to be blood probably and uh stuff but uh, it's all wrestling's fake you know it's it's meant to where people don't really get hurt you're supposed to try to protect the other person but it's stiff and people get hurt and people get sore and um it's rough you know um so uh but overall it's you know it's not people really trying to injure each other uh, to a degree, uh, so I think, uh, it's just all in good fun, really, it's just, wrestling just has this whole, uh, world around it that fans understand, where you've got the moves, and you've got the personas, and you've got the history, and, you know, you've got the championships, you've got the different kinds of matches, and there's just so much that's involved that you can just get submersed into, and you've got the men's roster, and you've got the women's roster, and you've got the tag teams, and uh, you've got like factions and groups of people and stuff you've got managers and you've got the referees and you've got the commentators you know you've got the different tv shows um the entrances the entrance themes that they come out to um there's just so much that's involved in all of it that it's a lot to uh get into there so anyways love you guys I'm winded, so God bless.